Good morning, everybody. Um, Greg's going to be upset at me that I totally changed my presentation. <laughs> uh, so I'm here today to talk to you about diversity as a competitive advantage. Um, I'll probably spend the first few minutes telling you that and then tell you some very provocative, controversial and open-ended statements. So, diversity as a competitive advantage is very obvious, right? So, four reasons why. Firstly, is to unearth problems that aren't already being solved. I think that if you have diverse teams, you see problems that are not related to scooters or food delivery or all the multiple things that are being... Um, you know, built in London and Silicon Valley today. Secondly, once you've found that problem, you get a better insight to the solution. So for example, in my industry, in beauty booking, there are many, 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 many beauty booking apps, right? So you'd think that the problem had been seen, but most of those beauty booking apps are founded by white men who don't often have treatments. So once you've found your problem, having a diverse team helps you get to a better solution. I'm obviously being presumptuous as to say that my solution is going to be the best one, but you know. <laughs> um, diversity is a competitive advantage because number three, you should always talk to users and it's a lot easier and cheaper if they're sat there next to you. I cannot stress this enough. My engineering team right now don't often have beauty treatments, as you can imagine. So what I did is I put an in-house coach um, in our company, put her on our app and they have to book the, th the coach through the app because that's the only way that they're going to be using the product. And then fourthly, because more varied eyeballs means more opportunities for solutions. So I love that in our team we have really, really young people. We have like an 18-year-old boy from Leeds who when he's looking at our product has a completely different opinion to me who's 35 and from Wolverhampton. So four really quick and obvious reasons why diversity is a competitive advantage. But this is where the pre preparation for this presentation made me think, so obviously we're diverse at Beauty Stack, right? I'm a diverse founder. I tick a lot of diversity check boxes. Uh, I am black and I'm a woman, so two there. Um, but looking at my team, so this is me in the middle. And in, the, in 2019, I've hired 22 people. So you look at that picture and you're like, ah, what a lovely, diverse team I have, right? However, 75% of those people are university educated versus the national average, as I am university educated. 57% are non-white versus the national average. Now, this is a really funny one because I haven't included uh, gender on here, but I definitely am biased towards non-white females. I see a girl, like I've hired two girls off social media because they approach me and I was like, oh, they remind me of me when I was young and starting out in London. I'm definitely going to hire them. So, you know, you think about the national average and it's actually 14% and we over-index here. We also over-index on age, so I'm 35 years old, I just come out of this bracket, but uh, um, aside from 25, under most of our team are under 25, so we do not have a varied age, age range in our startup, and this is also a problem. And then this is the most interesting, so if any of you are into Myers-Briggs or any personality testing, you won't be surprised to learn that I'm an ENTJ, obviously, the commander, uh, but I massively biased towards people with personality traits like mine. This was actually the most shocking thing where I, we make everyone um, do the Myers-Briggs when they join our company and then every single Friday someone presents, uh, does a presentation on their personality test to the whole company and then we talk about it and it's all lovey-dovey. And I thought I was being very, very diverse by making people do this personality test and when we crunch the data, everyone's just like me. And also, within that, they're heavily on the analyst. So within the Myers-Briggs, there's um, you know, analyst diplomats. There are a lot of analysts in my company. You'll be pleased to know, if you're a scientist in the room, that there's zero correlation to star signs. <laughs> I am like, I have a Gemini ring. I'm like, I'm such a Gemini. But yeah, no correlation at all. But my point is, is that bias is absolutely everywhere. These are 
my traits. We didn't have time to research and deep dive on all of them, which is a really important point I want to come back to. So I'm 35 years old. I'm a woman. I'm black, but I'm also Jamaican Indian, which is really important because I have hired people who are Indian because I romanticize, oh, they're like the Indian father that I never knew. You know, there are all of these things, that, assumptions that we make based on the people that we meet. Um, I noticed Greg has fangs like I do, so I, I feel really warm to him because I'm like, we've got similar teeth. <laughs> and, and Bruce is from the Midlands, so I'm like, you're from the Midlands? We're the same. You know, you're from Birmingham, I'm from Wolverhampton. We have very, very few Southerners in our company. That's not by accident. We have, I have hired no, I've hired no upper class white men. Like none. I have no like posh white guys in my company, never have. Whether they've self-selected to not apply or I've just not like reached, they're not part of my network. I think it's quite interesting when I go to other startups and I see their, um, how they're, companies built, that I have built my company in my image. Um, quite a few of my team members are estranged from their fathers. And actually, this comes from David Rowan, who told me that he um, always backs people with daddy issues because they've always got something to prove. They work incredibly hard, that, you know, they relate to people in a different way. So the fact is, is bias affects how we see people, how we think, even if how we feel about people, right? So I want to go back to that question. Are we actually really diverse at Beauty Stack? What would you say now, right? Not really. But I'm going to say another controversial thing. Does it really matter? Should I really be bothered about being diverse at Beauty Stack? And I can say that because my brat black privilege in this white woke world, because if any white man stood up here and said that, they wouldn't be allowed to say that. But it's really important to understand this. I believe that an early stage startup should run like a cult, right? Should I really be focused on building a diverse team or should I be focused on building a team who I can communicate with, who intuitively understand me because my job is to build things really quickly, really efficiently and really at a low resource? I.e., is it really my problem? Bias comes from the top down. So I, I as a founder, I'm incredibly biased. Even a leader of a group of five people will have biases that basically, you know, determine what that group looks like or how that group acts. So we all know that this comes from the top down. So to me, we need more diversity at all levels of decision making. We need more diversity in government, in university boards, at LPs, at venture capital, and at banks, because there are many of my users who are young black women who get turned away from getting bank loans because they don't look like the person sat behind the table. I believe that this is super important because they're the ones who choose who gets funded. It's so important. I think that having diversity at a very micro level in terms of um, team structure in an early stage startup is less effective than thinking of diversity right at the top when they get to choose people like me. I think diversity can be across an industry. So you have a team who looks like me, a team who looks like an Indian 60-year-old man, a team who looks like a 30-white-year-old man. And that's how we help diversity go across the teams, which I know that, like I said to Greg, is quite controversial. So more diverse founders to me make more diverse teams, and that's the most important thing. And I'm really, really um, pleased to be part of many initiatives, like Greg said with Atomico, who've been working with Diversity VC, um, to have it in the term sheet where, whereby they have to have diversity initiatives when they choose founders. Because doing this presentation made me realize that I am incredibly biased, and I will now have an open and under, you know an open mind towards how I hire my team. But what I'm asking you guys, if you do work at government or at banks or at LVs or at venture capital, is that you meet me halfway. It has to be top down, meets bottom up to make diversity more of a thing in the tech industry. Thank you.